Hey, what's up everybody? James Attaway here. Today we're going to go over how to evaluate your live sound system by ear. I know you all want to listen to me teach how to do this in with Smart Live. Uh, and everybody's asking about that, but there's some things that Smart Live can't do you do for you that we're going to go over today. Uh, one other announcement is that uh, I do have the registration opening for the Worship Sound Wisdom course. It opens on Sunday. Be sure to check that out. There's a link in the description below for more info. But today we're going to go ahead and jump right in and I'm going to teach you about how to listen and evaluate uh, your live sound system. Uh, so you've got to start with training your ear or learning how to hear the difference between what you're hearing uh, and any changes that need to happen. So. Uh, one of the tools that I like to use for this is called Sound Gym. So there's all kinds of tools out there, but you have to train your ears themselves uh, to be able to, to hear the differences of what's going on. And so you can identify and identify frequencies because you don't always have smart with you. I was at a church in Houston this last weekend doing some training and their sound system was a little bit muddy. There was some issues with it. Um, I'm sure it was tuned at some point, but uh, notching out just a couple little frequencies that I could identify uh, was really helpful for getting that dialed in. So one of the things that I like to tell people to do, and the first thing that I do when I go places to do training, is I have people walk around the room and listen to the different sections. Uh, play some music that sounds good, uh, or at least that if it's been mastered, uh, that's going to be really helpful for you to know that, okay, this you know music sounds good. Uh, I've got some more resources for finding great sounding music. Uh, I'll go over in just a minute. But you're going to walk around the different parts of the room and you're going to try to hear how the sound changes from place to place. Now, hopefully you've got a great PA system and it doesn't change at all. But uh, if you're like most churches, your PA doesn't cover perfectly uh, every single seat in the house. And so what you're going to find is that there are places where it's a little brighter, places where it's a little darker. And even with the subs, like you can see a sub behind me, uh, there are going to be times when the subs or places in the room where the subs are louder than everything else. And that can kind of be a problem for some people. Uh, so you have to know that how it's different from different places where you're standing compared to uh, where you are in front of house. Uh, you have to be able to, to have the skill of translating, right? Uh, or audioizing or visualizing what it sounds like someplace else compared to what you're hearing right then and there. Uh, so as you're walking around, a few things that I'm listening for are the, uh, the differences in the high frequencies. Uh, a lot of times when you have speakers that don't cover your room adequately, uh, you're going to have places where the high frequencies uh, drop off or it gets a lot darker. So you're going to have to realize that uh, that's one of the things that you're working with. Now, a lot of stages uh, you will have front fills here. So like the, the front speakers, let me see if I can get you to see those. There we go. There's the front speakers, right? And right below them would be really dark if we didn't have anything uh, filling in the front. So on the front of the stage, we've got these front fills here, right? So those are the kinds of things that you have to be listening for. And if you don't have that, uh, you're gonna get yourself in a world of trouble because you're gonna be trying to make it maybe too bright in one spot, trying to make up for differences in other spots that aren't quite so bright. So as you're walking around the room and if you're, uh, you know, you're taking care of uh, listening to the different spots. You know, you're listening for the, the high mids, right? The presence frequencies that are gonna give you that, um, that clarity and that presence, that intelligibility. But you're also gonna be listening for the low end, right? Where does the bass build up and where might the bass disappear, right? Low frequencies can uh, act really strange in an acoustic environment. And so they're gonna be, uh, one thing that's really tricky, they can actually completely disappear in some spots. So as you're listening to the room, you've got to be careful and watch out for that. Um, now, as you start to fine tune your ear, uh, you're going to be able to hear and listen for other things that are more like mid range resonances, right? And as you start to identify those frequencies some more, right? You start practicing with sound gym. You can identify, oh, there's a resonance around 300 or there's a resonance around 500 or wow, this sounds kind of nasally right here. It sounds like there's a little bit more, you know, one K in this spot you're gonna be able to identify the different places where it sounds different uh, throughout the room. And that's one of the ways that you can evaluate your sound system. Um, so we come back in the sound booth over here. Uh, you can see I do have Smart going, right? And that's one of the tools that you can use and Smart 
the thing about Smart is that it's not just a single point RTA, right? You could pull up an RTA on your phone and be able to see what the frequency readout is right there with your phone's microphone and find any, uh, anything that's sticking out or uh, any humps that are, uh, sorry, low battery mode, uh, things that are sticking out. If you, you know, like if there's something that's really sticking out, you'll be able to identify that frequency there. The thing about the RTA or the, the smart or a, it does a Fourier transform. What exactly that is, it compares the signal coming in to the signal that it's producing so that you can see timing, you can see phase, uh, you can measure uh, how all the frequencies are combining, not just what it is right there at that one point. Um, now, if you'll take a look on here, let me switch this around real fast. Come on, there we go. So on smart, if you're gonna use this in RTA mode, right? You can go to your averaging and you can put it on 10 seconds. I don't know if you see that, I put it on 10 seconds. So this is going to show me an average over more time. Uh, and this way you can listen to actually, you know, recorded music and it's going to show the different frequency bands uh, and how they average out over time, right? Uh, different songs are going to sound different, but this can help you identify the little things that are going to change uh, of the overall room sound. Now, the other thing to remember is your RTA mic placement, right? Wherever this is placed is going to listen to, you know, that where that is, it's what's going to show up on the screen over here. So when you're setting up your live mic, uh, it can sometimes be helpful to have it, you know, right back there. Uh, where your front of house is, but other times it can be helpful to have it in a place where you can't hear, right? Uh, I was talking with a guy this week uh, and his, you know, he's trying to tune his room with a measurement mic and um, Room EQ Wizard, right? That's one of the other tools that's kind of like Smart Live, but uh, it doesn't do it in real time. It plays a test signal uh, and then tells you what to do. But his front of house mix position is up in a balcony, right? So he's up above where the speakers are pointing. And so then he's pulling out a bunch of low mids trying to overcome that, and that's gonna be a problem too. So knowing, you know, having your mic placed in the right spot is gonna help you get uh, better results for a more accurate measurement. Uh, now, I mentioned the, the soundgym.co, right? They have some uh, audio ear training games. Uh, there's a free tier where you can just sign up and play three of the games. I really just play the EQ Master uh, game or Peak Master, uh, where you have a signal and you can turn the EQ on and off, and then you try to identify what the frequency is that uh, they're boosting. Uh, and as the levels go up, you have to get closer and closer, right? There's fudge room at the beginning, uh, but then it gets narrower and narrower as you go up in level, and it's a lot of fun to do. Uh, and you find out where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are. Uh, for me, my strengths are down in the lows and the low mids. Um, so when I'm, uh, when I'm, uh, you know, playing that game, I recognize, you know, I can really nail whether that's 200, 250, 300, 125, I'm getting really close at those. Uh, for other frequencies, actually in the high mids, I'm actually quite inaccurate and I need to work on that some more. So that's one tool that you can use that, you know, like I've been doing, you know, pro audio for 15 years and I'm still growing at that and it's still something that uh, I've got to work on and get better at. So uh, soundgym.co, uh, I forgot to put a link in the description, but uh, I'll pop that down there later. Uh, a great way to do ear training uh, for learning how to hear the differences. Now, the other thing that you need to do is to get some great reference headphones. Uh, I've got these here. They're the Audio-Technica ATH M50s. Uh, these are great overall closed back headphones. Uh, some people prefer an open back system uh, for, um, for their reference headphones because they're a little bit flatter and a little less boxy. Uh, so you can, um, you can use those headphones to listen to what the music sounds like in the headphones, right? Uh, it's, you know, it's kind of sealed off from the room. And then you take those off and you hear the distance difference. That's supposed to be just like what you're doing with this, this Peak Master game, is finding the differences on, uh, you know, what it is between the signal that you're hearing with the headphones that you know are really flat and what you're hearing through your PA. Uh, the next thing that you really need to do is uh, develop your kind of library of reference tracks or music that you know sounds good. 
Now the song I'm playing today is one that I mixed but never got released so I don't have to worry about any copyright infringement stuff or YouTube flagging me and I, you know, I got permission from the artist so that's helpful too. Uh, but for you, you need to start listening and I would play this but again, copyright infringement. I have a playlist on Spotify of tracks that I use for reference. Now there's a lot of stuff in there that's not necessarily what I use for system tuning uh, but, um, but for system tuning uh, you know, I've got this whole list of tracks in there that sound good, right? You can check that link out in the description below. Uh, and don't use this for like walk-in music for your church service. This is not all like, you know, Christian worship stuff. Um, so, you know, there's your disclaimer. Uh, but it all sounds good and some of it's for different reasons. Like some, you know, one song I like the way that the shaker sounds, right? Or some songs the vocals way out in front and some songs the vocals tuck way out in back. Um, so I'm using those to listen for those kinds of things. Um, you should develop your own playlist. And one of the ways that I found music that I liked, uh, that I knew sounded good, was I looked up the list of Grammy award winning albums that, you know, the non-classical Grammy for best engineered album, right? So not necessarily, nearly, uh, not necessarily classical music, but non-classical music that either, excuse me, live video and indigestion. Uh, that either was won or was nominated for a Grammy for Best in the Junior Out Album. Uh, and so you'll find some tracks in there that resonate with you and that you really like, right? You're going to have to uh, listen to some music you don't love, right, to find these great tracks. But you can find some that you really like and find some that you identify certain things that you hear in some sound systems and don't hear in other sound systems. So it's not just identifying what you're hearing in the headphones and then not hearing in the house or, you know, hearing in the headphones and then you hear too much of it in the house, uh, it's really being able to identify the details that might be missing, right? So when you're missing, uh, when you're missing some, of the, uh, some of the details, you can know, okay, this sound system isn't performing 100% in this area, right? Usually it'll be like, I know there's this organ part there, but I can't quite hear it went through this PA, right? Those are your clues that, you know, your PA system needs a little bit more uh, in the detail department, right? Um, and those things that are missing, nobody's going to tell you what's missing if they don't know that it's there. So you have to be the one that really knows this music well and really learn it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Let me check my notes. Um, right. So when you do get around to making changes, um, there are some things that smart won't fix, right? If you've got high frequencies that are too high in one spot of the room and not hot enough in another spot of the room, you're not gonna fix that with smart or any type of EQ. That's a speaker system problem and it can only be solved by changing the way that the speakers are configured. And I don't do that because I don't like getting on lifts and doing rigging and potentially crushing someone. Uh, so I just don't do that right now. I have hired somebody else to do it. Um, however, you know, knowing what you can change with smart is the, uh, you know, you know, you know what the PA is uh, or the room is resonating at so that you can make those changes when necessary. Now, when you are making changes, uh, whether you have smart or not, make small changes and make little ones at a time, right? Uh, and then A, B it as you go, right? Uh, at this church I was at in Houston, I was listening to music. I was like, eh, it feels a little muddy. So I, I found one frequency that was uh, kind of bothering me. I thought I knew where it was. Uh, and then I, you know, started sweeping around a little bit to try to find what I was hearing, right? I already had in mind what I wanted to, to take out. So I boosted a little bit and swept it a little bit to see if I could, could highlight what I was already hearing with my ears, right? I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to like just sweep around and find something that stinks. I'm trying to highlight what, uh, what I'm already identifying with my ears, right? So then I sweep around and I find that and I duck it maximum probably 3 dB to start, right? These little changes are going to make a big difference uh, in the way that you, uh, in the way that the entire PA sounds. Because it's not just an individual instrument that you're, you know, putting EQ through. It's the entire mix. So these changes can be quite small and you can make little adjustments that make a big difference, right? So always make little adjustments and then A, B it. Be like, okay, do I really like it better with this gone rather than uh, when it was flat, right? And the other thing to check for is if there's already some system EQ on there, right? Sometimes you can bypass a system EQ that's there and see, you know, like, 
Is this doing something that I really like? Is this actually helpful for me? You know, that's another thing you can consider. I don't know how many times I've walked into a sound system and you know, there's, you know, graphic EQ on top of graphic EQ on top of graphic EQ and just bypassing them all just made it sound a lot cleaner. Uh, so again, my battery's low. Hopefully that didn't pause the video. Um, but those are the kinds of things that you need to be listening for uh, when you're evaluating your PA. Uh, again, if you like this video, hit it thumbs up. Uh, hopefully the audio was better for this live stream than the last one. Uh, be sure to check out the Worship Sound Wisdom course with the registration opening on Sunday. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you back near next time because you'll subscribe and ding the little bell and give it a thumbs up and comment below and let me know that you like this video. So uh, thanks for tuning in. We will see you guys later. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the course. Take care.